There's a uh, man incredible, uh, beautiful, exciting, you know, time. You know, and I thank the players. I thought they had really good energy. We don't know what we're doing yet or, or how to do it, but uh, they certainly brought a, a great energy to practice one. If we can uh, repeat that for the next 14, uh, we will absolutely get better. Um, but, uh, man, I don't know. It was just uh, obviously when you start fall camp, there's a, a, a different level of excitement. But probably this is, uh, you know, one of the day ones of spring ball in a long, long time. I, I felt a sense of that uh, of that fall camp feeling um, as we start to try to build a program here, and so it was uh, it was exciting. Good day. Thought our coaches uh, were well prepared for the time we had. In the future, I'd like to have a a little longer time to for them to be with our strength staff and us to have a little downtime in February before we jump right into the grind of spring ball, but. Um, that's the schedule we have, and I thought I thought we were well prepared, and I thought practice went smooth. And obviously, uh, man, that's a beautiful, beautiful spot to hold a practice. And, and you know, we're thankful to all of our boosters and um, and our own to victory people and all the people that contributed to this wonderful facility. It was a uh, it was uh, a really 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 nice evening. So um, obviously, it's hard for me to to judge exactly what was good and wasn't because we were trying to set the tempo and running around and um, until I see the film, but was uh, pleased with the effort for sure. Well, I tried to get everywhere, and I tried to make a lot of notes of things I'd like to see better or done differently, and um, you know, and 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 be a part of kind of every group at some point during the practice. And we got a ton of reps in. Um, we two spotted on fields, and so everybody got plenty of reps. And really, the first thing you want to see is I really believe that in, that people like to think uh, the main thing is. X, Y, or Z, uh, I think the main thing is the little things and the way we break the huddle, the way we get to the football, the tempo to which we play with, the attention to the ball and the attention to the detail, um, starting this morning from class attendance to all the way through practice. And uh, until you've been a part of that, it's a mental grind and it takes mental toughness and that doesn't come natural. To, to a lot of people, not just football players, but to a lot of people. And I think that is, uh, you know, the number one thing that I want to get out of spring ball would be that we would understand that the little things truly are the main thing. And um, I thought we got the effort part right today. I'll have to watch the film and see about the other stuff. But um, I, I got around to, to most every, every group, I believe. Oh, man, I I don't want to be vague. It's just hard to, you know, with one practice without pads on for me to uh, – I, I don't want to say something that's inaccurate. I, I, I loved our energy. I thought we looked better on the field uh, physically than, uh, than maybe I thought. Um, I thought we showed good burst. Um, I thought our quarterbacks threw some decent balls at times. And other times where our mechanics were, were really bad. But I kind of expected that. And, you know, that's we, we've got to coach that throughout the 15 days. But um, if they'll keep giving the, the same energy and effort that they gave today, we'll get better um, throughout spring. And so I'm leaving today's practice feeling very positive and optimistic. Just to kind of get that first reaction. 
Well, it's important. I, I think the biggest thing is them understanding how we want to practice. And it's totally different, not that it's right or wrong or better than somebody else does. It's just the way we do that. And it's a frantic um, pace and uh, and they're swimming a little bit in day one, looking around, where do I go next? What do I do next? And no matter how many times you go through the practice schedule with them like we have the last two weeks, they're still going to be, all right, this is the first time we've been on those two fields. And um, the horn blows, and everybody's screaming and yelling, and, and they're trying to figure out where they go, and they'll get that. And I think that was the biggest thing for me is establishing the tempo to which we want to practice and the effort to which we want to do it. Well, I think chemistry is incredibly important. Um, I like our staff a lot, and I think we have good chemistry. Um, are we where we want to be as far along as we'd like to be? Uh, probably not, because we just had such a short window um, to to try to decide our, exactly what are we going to try to do this spring. And you know, we have coaches from a lot of different uh, staffs and backgrounds and. Now we've got to melt all this together and, and try to be all on the same page in one voice. Uh, the last thing you want is, is kids hearing from too many voices that are not saying the same thing. And so um, I think it's vital uh, that they see we have chemistry. I think they do that. I think they see that when we say this is our expectation, I think the coaches have a clear understanding that that's a non-negotiable for me, that that has to be everybody. and. It's impossible, I firmly believe, it's impossible for me or any of the coaches to give something away that we don't already possess. And if we say this is the culture we want to portray, then we must possess it. And, and so I like our chemistry, and now we've got to be great teachers. We'll see from day one to day two to day three, you know, can we get some stuff cleaned up? Well, obviously, I put a lot of thought into that before we put the staff together because I just I think we live in a different um, day and time for college football, and the days of me just sitting there and and coaching quarterbacks and and just calling all the plays. I think there's so much more that's needed right now to try to manage your own roster, to recruit, and to manage the culture, and. Um, to have, you know, Philip and Kent in the meeting room. He can't coach on the field yet. I hope that passes. But, um, but to have him in the, in the staff room, in the planning part, um, he's been with me a long time and knows, you know, the expectations. And when I'm not in the room, um, I feel very comfortable with both of those guys. And that's given me freedom to recruit like crazy. Uh, to get on the phone at practice with top guys and uh, just put extra effort into that. And I think that's going to be invaluable for us to have those two guys who I trust a lot offensively. Yeah, that, that, well, I don't think anybody missed today. There's some uh, yellow jerseys out there, which means non-contact, but we didn't have pads on anyway. So uh, I think they had to stay out of some of the, the team activity there. Um, but um, I think everybody, you know, is is going to give it a go at some point. I think we held about three guys out of the team stuff, but we expect them to be back uh, hopefully after spring break. Yeah, we're going, uh, you know, we got to go two non-padded to start. 
then we'll go pads Friday, and then spring break hits. I think the first uh, practice that we'll do some type of uh, scrimmage situation will be uh, practice six. Um, a decent amount, you know, whether, uh, whether we like it or don't like it, it's, it's part of the world that we live in. And so I think whether it's, uh, whether it's a discussion with an individual young man, um, or you just, and sometimes maybe we as coaches can create things in our mind that, um, that need to be discussed or addressed and, you know, so it wasn't. Maybe it's not as as much nil talk as it is you just trying to establish. You know, what do we want to be within our team walls? What do we want that to look like? What do we want it to look like academically? What do we want it to look like in regards to how we deal with our teammates? Whether we agree, think that everything is exactly fair, not fair, um, whatever that is. How do we handle that? And so I spent a lot of time teaching just in team settings, having open dialogue and trying to create a transparency and honesty among our team for, hey, what do we want it to be? And, you know, there's not a single person in regards to NIL um, on any college football team probably that would say I wasn't for that. And so if we're all for that, then we have to be willing to also deal with when we think it might not be adequately done for you. Um, there's still a lot of guys that go in debt to be a part of this program and every program. And, you know, you could tr trade seats with them if, you, if you'd like to, and, and obviously nobody would. And so I'm just trying to – I want our young men to try to operate out of an attitude of blessing and not entitlement. Um, and even if it, it may, life's not fair sometimes and everything won't always be fair, but what do we do when it's not? And so I've spent a lot of time trying to teach on, on those kinds of things. Oh man, I, I would, I would. That is a great question. I just would hate to start singling out people after one practice. I, I, I do think you know we've got to develop a uh, culture council type mentality at some point that we can depend upon to say to anyone on the team, "Hey, we're better than that." That's that's really not the way we do that, and. You know, do we have a few guys that I think are headed in that direction? Yes, but we need more. And but that that that's most every time you take over a program and you start changing the way you practice, the expectations. And um, but yeah, there was you know I, I get reports every day from our strength staff and academic staff and uh, training staff, and we still got a ways to go, truthfully, in, in the standard to which we want to operate and. Uh, we're going to count on the guys that, that I do get the good reports, and hopefully after about three to five practices, we'll, we'll talk about some names. Yeah, I don't – if you, you follow my track record, I just – I believe in it. I just – I think you have to have a catch radius in this league. I just you're, – you're not going to create tremendous separation in this league when they're in man-to-man -man situations all the time. And so what happens when that's the case, um, we can't just decide we're going to – 
uh, be a scrambling team when that happens. If you get a one-on-one -on -one and the ball is correctly placed, um, really good receivers that have some catch radius, um, I've, I've seen with my own eyes are able to make plays and it be really, really advantageous to an offense. So I think uh, at the tight end position and in, at the wide receiver position, particularly the outside guys, to have some length is, is very beneficial. I, I thought TJ, I thought um, Robbie and Holden all are, I, I think they're hungry. I think they want to be taught. They want to learn a different way. They want to learn a different system. And um, I just, I, I think they all have been like a sponge and saying, just help me coach. Just, I want to get better. I want to be the guy. And um, obviously they're all a little different. And we've got to figure out, you know, to play to the strengths of those guys. But at some point, all three will have to to be the guy. You're going to have to lead the football team and lead not only on the field, off the field, and in the locker room, decision-making, accuracy, uh, taking care of the ball, uh, all of those things. But to this point, the thing I've really liked is you know, it's just, man, if the meeting's at 2.30, they're there at 2.15 saying, can we start early? Can we go? And um, they're just, they're wanting to learn. Yeah, we, we won't narrow down the reps in spring. We will in fall. You have to, but spring we won't. I mean, everybody got the same number of reps today. And so, and we're going to rotate some people. Look, I told them today in the team meeting, I mean this, there is no depth chart. I don't care what group you trot out there with on the field right now. I don't, I don't have in my mind this is a first team, a second team, a third team guy. You know, you're going to get the reps, and we're going to rotate different people in with this group that runs out there and uh, grade every single rep of it and, and kind of figure out where we are after spring. But, but really believe that, uh, that everybody's going to get equal reps this spring and develop some depth at least before we decide kind of where everybody is in the pecking order of depth charts. Real quick. Yeah, well, I don't know. It, it It's hard to say that until you know what kind of health you have. I think the best format I've ever done is if you're healthy enough and you really want to create good on good competition, you just put the offense against the defense and and you walk in the stadium and on the scoreboard is defense 24 and offense zero. And offense, your job is to score more than 24 to win it. And defense, hold them under 24, you win. And that's the most probably um, creative and exciting and competitive. I don't like all those formats where, all right, you get a first down, it's a point, or I don't like, all right, we're going to go the one offense against the three defense and put up a bunch of points and make everybody feel excited. And, and I think that's kind of, a false sense of, of where we really are. So I hope we're healthy enough just to go out there and compete and tell the defensive staff, you roll out there whoever you want, but your job is to keep the offense under whatever point spread we, uh, we agree upon. Coach, thanks for your time. Yep, thanks, guys.